Uh, I think this is important to understand because the people we saw in the total increase come from international, interprovincial, and intraprovincial sources. So the total net increase from 2000 to 2001 was uh, 2,800, and you see the sources and so on. You can see that international is uh, variable, but uh, relatively significant, as much as 15% of the population increased for the uh, Vancouver Island Coast Development Region. But when we look at the Mid-Island Region, there's quite a different picture. The highest level of international uh, migration has been 15%. Um, prior to the most recent year, it's been 4% or less. So this region is extremely dependent on interprovincial and intra-provincial migration. Now there's also a correlation to what goes on in the metro areas, which are the big recipients of international, international migration. And that correlation is by having the influx <coughs> of international immigrants going to Vancouver, Calgary, and so on, that creates a certain energy in the housing markets, which allows a progression through the market. <coughs> people are more likely to be able to sell because there's a relatively act active market. Those people who want to relocate for whatever reason, say to the Mid-Island, have an option or an opportunity to sell a house in Vancouver or Surrey or Victoria, perhaps, Calgary, uh, Ontario, and come to the island. So indirectly, <coughs> the island is benefiting from international migration, but ethnically it isn't. Your mix of ethnicities is not increasing. So you look around the room, and this is what makes up the population uh, ethnically of the Mid-Island region. Uh, that raises some questions, perhaps, in terms of how long will migrants continue to come to the Mid-Island region to retire, to buy recreation property, and so on. 